Assalamu alaikum. I can't tell if you can hear me now because I don't hear any walaikum salams here. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> Sir. So you can hear me. Okay, great. Um, so my name is Baba Ali. <laughs> and uh, the ch biggest challenge I have oftentimes when I go to events is I don't know what I'm going to open up with. I don't know what I'm going to start with. Um, I'll tell you a story that actually happened to me. My friend invited me to his wedding. And I was excited for him, um, but the challenge I was having is he was telling me, Ali, I need to ask you for a small favor. I'm like, what is it? He said, I need you to um, do some comedy at my wedding. I'm like, I don't think that works. He's like, why? I said, because weddings people, they don't, they don't laugh. I mean, it's, it's not, it sounds like a good idea, but no one pays attention to the guy who's speaking. It's like the guy who gives announcements at Juma. Um, no one's paying attention to him. So um, it's going to be like that. And like, no, no, bro. And this is what he said to me. He said, Ali, I've known you for 15 years. I've never asked you for one favor. This is the one favor I'm asking you. Please come to my wedding. Please do comedy. And I said, why is this so important? He says, I'm a doctor. My wife is a doctor. My dad is a doctor. Most of the people at the wedding are doctors. It's going to feel like a medical clinic. We need someone to make people laugh. I'm like, okay, fine. And I really didn't know what I was going to do. I was sitting down, and I had my little um, piece of paper, note down, trying to figure out, okay, what should I do? What should I do? What should I do? And what happened was, as I'm sitting down, right before he introduced me, the father did this. Um, the father was a doctor. He said, before we bring up the next speaker, they didn't even introduce me as a comedian. They said, this next speaker, um, we are going to, I want to thank a couple of people who have come here today. Dr. Khan, please stand up. And this doctor was standing up, they will clap for him. And Dr. So-and-so, please stand up, they will clap for him. And Dr. So-and-so, please stand up, they clap for him. And Dr. So-and-so, and he would keep introducing all the doctors that had come to this wedding. And as I'm looking around, I realize, am I the only one that's not a doctor at this wedding? And because of that, I wrote a joke. Right there, I wrote a joke. I said, if I do this joke and it's funny, it's going to be really, really easy for me. I wrote the joke. I went up on stage, and this is exactly what I said. I said, with all the doctors that are here, who's at the hospital? <laughs> they weren't laughing. They were looking at each other. Who, are, who is at the hospital? And everything was a disaster at that point. Everything was a disaster. And as I'm sitting there, I'm like, I'm trying to do jokes, I'm trying to do comedy, they're not laughing, they think I'm making announcements, and uh, my, it, right when I think I hit rock bottom, my daughter, at the age of four years old, I think she was, she came and, on stage and she pulled my pants, and she said, Baba, who are you talking to? <laughs> and I'm like, I'm being heckled by a four-year-old, and I'm like, this is worse. But um, I used that excuse, and I said, oh, Hanifa, her name is Hanifa. Han so I'm Abu Hanifa. Hanifa, um, let's go, uh, where? you need to go outside? Okay, let's go outside. And I took her around and went outside. Because of that situation, I'm more careful on what I'm going to talk about today. So I didn't write, this is my actual boarding pass that I flew in today. I flew all the way from Los Angeles, California to come here to talk to you guys today. <laughs> on the back of my boarding pass, I said, what should I talk about? And I walked around, and I, as soon as I walked, this is a true story, today it happened. As soon as I walked out of the car, um, a husband and wife approached me up and said, Salaam alaikum, Bali, Babali, me and my wife met on your website, Hafardin. I said, okay, Jazakallah Khair, you just made my day. And I walk in, and as soon as I sit in the speaker's room, everyone's talking about marriage. And the next person's talking about marriage. And the next person's talking about marriage. And I go pray Maghrib. As soon as I pray Maghrib, some people are taking pictures, and one of the three people that was sitting with those guys, he said, me and my wife met on your website. Again, they're talking about marriage. Right before they introduced me on stage, Muslim Link at their booth said, Ali, can we talk to you about something? I said, about what? About marriage. And I realized there's some marriage issue happening here. So today, <laughs> tonight, I'm going to talk to you about marriage. But before I do, I need to talk who I'm talking to. How many people here are single? Can you raise your hands? Okay. How many people here are married? Can I get raise the hands? Okay, how many people are confused by the question? So, some of you are not raising your hands. <laughs> What's going on here? Okay. <laughs> so, are we married? What's going on? Okay. Um, so 15 years ago, I found my other half. I got married. Um, and I'm happily married, alhamdulillah. But being married, one person's clapping, they're like, yeah. 
being married for 15 years, I've learned a bunch of things about men and women that no one ever told me. And sisters and brothers, all those single people that you raised your hands right now, these are things that your parents don't tell you. You learn after marriage. So I'm going to tell you guys what happens and what, what you'll learn before marriage. Okay, here's some things I learned for 15 years of marriage. How men and women are different. Do you see the brother who's standing up and walking out in the corner right there? He's standing up and walking out. You see? That's my first example. This is how men use the bathroom. When a man has to use the bathroom, you know what he does? He gets up, he walks down the aisle, he walks, no one even sees it. Until I point out, you didn't even see it. He walks discreetly back in the back, he's gonna go right there through the exit, he uses the bathroom, he comes back and sits down, and no one even saw him missing. That's how men use the bathroom. Do you know how women use the bathroom? A sister will look at another sister and say, I need to go to the bathroom. Her and the entire row of sisters get up, say, let's go to the bathroom, and they go. In America, we have the tea party, but over here we have the pee party. Everyone goes together, right? The funny thing, sisters, is men don't think this way. Men, they don't ever like, uh, like the Dawood Bhatt, who's there? I've never, I've done an event with him in Malaysia, and I've seen him tonight again. I never asked him, hey, Sheikh, I want to go pee. Do you want to come with me? It doesn't work. Men, actually, I'll tell you, sisters, how different we are from women. Men, once we go into the bathroom, even if we were having a private conversation, as soon as we cross the border of into the bathroom, I do not look at you. You do not look at me. We have stopped all communication. The men's restroom is dead silent. And then we leave. And I'll get a raise the hands of the brothers here. How many brothers here, and a raise their hands, have had a conversation or met a, a random person in the bathroom and you had a conversation, you talked about your personal life and whatever. Can I get a raise of hands? Okay, how, okay, we have one brother in the front. Brother, what, what are you talking about in the bathroom? <laughs> he doesn't know, he's confused. He put his hand down. Like, nothing, nothing. I thought I won something. Okay, how many brothers do we have? Oh, you see, we a f one, two? We have, what, 200 people here? Two people? Two? Now, watch this, brothers. Watch this. Sisters, how many of you? I haven't finished the question, they're already laughing. How many of you have had a conversation with someone, you didn't know them, they're washing their hands, they're fixing their hijab, they're putting on makeup, whatever they're doing in the bathroom, and you had a conversation with them? Can I get a raise of hands, please? May I show the court exhibit A? All the men are looking at their wives, who are you talking to in the bathroom? What's going on here? And this is how we are communicating so differently. What we're learning here is men and women, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has wired us differently. We are built differently. We can't force women to be like men and men to be like women. We're different. But we never studied this stuff before marriage. No one ever tells us how these things are different. I'll give you guys an example. They did a study at a, at a university where they want to count the number of words the average man speaks per day. The study showed the average man speaks 12,000 words per day. 12,000. But by the time he gets home, he has spoken 11,999 words. This is why when the wife asked the husband, how was your day? The husband's like this, good. <laughs> Who was at the wedding? Everybody. And the wife is looking at the husband, he's so boring. I'm out of words. He's like, he doesn't, he doesn't communicate as much. Men speak in like sentences, sisters speak in paragraphs, right? When they speak much more. The same study show the average female speaks 25,000 words per day. Yes, and that is something far better than... Sisters, by the way, by the way, I have to say, sisters are much more smarter than brothers are. Am I right, sisters? And I'm going to prove it in a couple... And today, I'm going to show you certain things that sisters can do that brothers can't do and vice versa. But the average female speaks 25,000 words per day. This is why when the husband gets home, and the wife is there, and the, or the wife gets home, and the husband's there, and they're both there. The wife will ask the husband, how was your day, honey? And he's like, good. And he's just newlywed, so he doesn't know any better. And this is what he does. How was your day, honey? And this is what his wife does. <gasps> Not only will you learn, learn about her day, you learn about Hafsa's day, Khadija's day. Who's Hafsa? Who's Khadija? Let me tell you about what happened to Aisha. Who's Aisha? And all this information comes, and he's like... He has so much information, he doesn't know who all these people are, but now he knows, right? 
Because as sisters and brothers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has built us differently, that we speak different amounts. Which one's better? Neither. We're different, but we're equal, right? So next, how do we deal with stress differently? I want some real answers, brothers. Brothers, when you are stressed, you come home, you had a very tough day, what do you want? Of all the things in the world, what do you want? Give me, give me a, shout me an answer, somebody. Sleep. Okay, next one. Play Xbox. That's a young kid saying that. Okay. You're not a brother. You can't raise your hand. Doesn't count. Yes, you can. Alone time. Leave me alone. Okay, so we have leave me alone, Xbox. What else? Food and sleep. Not one brother said, I want to talk about my feelings. <laughs> Not one brother shouted that. So look how unique Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has built us differently. So when brothers see another brother stress, what do we do? We give him alone time, we give him a sandwich, to tell him to give him some sleep and give him an Xbox, right? He's happy. <laughs> Sisters, they don't do that. Sisters are different than with each other. With a sister, for example, if I'm talking right now, and some sister gets a text message, and a text message is something that's disturbing. She gets up and she walks out. Her entire pee party of friends, they see it. Something's wrong, we gotta go. So they all go outside. <laughs> they make a big circle. One girl's comforting her, one's saying, what's wrong? They're ta she's talking about, she's crying. One girl, one girl in the group has tissue. There's always a girl with tissue. I can almost guarantee you, sisters, none of the brothers have tissue. So as they're sitting down, they're comforting each other, they're showing empathy, this and that. The brothers, they don't know what to do. They don't know what to do when they get married and their wife is crying. Because generally, brothers don't cry in front of other brothers. You never say a psalm like, oh, brother, how are you doing? I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't happen. So we're not trained. We don't know what to do. When we get married and our wife is there for the first time, you come home and you say, how was your day, honey? And she's doing this. And you're like, so, anything wrong? I have a feeling something might be wrong. And then men say the silliest things. They're like, uh, so, you want me to make you a sandwich or something? It's like, what's wrong with this guy? So men, when they're stressed, they want to be left alone, right? That's what they said. They want to be left alone, Xbox food, right? So men, when they do this with other brothers, they get married. They see their wife, and the same wife who's crying, She's crying, they see her, it's like, wow, something's really bothering her. Something's disturbing her. And she's like, Aah! and he's like, I know what I'm going to do. I'll be the best husband in the world. I'm going to leave her alone for 20 minutes. <laughs> and he walks away, and the wife is like, what's wrong with this guy? And he's like, I'm the best husband in the world. I keep leaving her alone. And this is how different they are because guys leave other guys alone, and girls comfort each other. And if we learn this stuff before marriage, it says, okay, when my husband has a tough day, I'll leave him alone, even though it's weird. And for the guy, if, I, if my wife is having a tough day, I'll go talk to her, or more importantly for sisters, you listen to her. Because the last thing a sister wants is for you to give solutions to her if she doesn't want a solution. This is what's confusing for sisters, because some sisters who are married, they're wondering why every time I go to my husband, I tell him what's going wrong and what happened during my day. He interrupts me and tells me what I should do, what the solution is. What we don't understand in this perspective is the reason why sisters are speaking out loud is for them is how to, they need to think out loud to solve their problem, and they just need to let it out. For brothers, they internalize. That's why they leave them alone for 20 minutes, and they make them feel really, really good, and they come back as if nothing's wrong. We do things differently. Allah just wired us differently. This is, as much as I do some stand-up humor, these are some things I want gems to be there, so we should take this back and improve our relationships. Okay, so what's also different about men and women? One of my favorite ways that men and women are interesting, and I remember I told you sisters are smarter than men, um, women are smarter than men. Um, sisters can do something very special that brothers can't do. And brothers can do something special that men, uh, sisters can't do. Brothers have the ability of sitting down looking at a blank wall and thinking about absolutely nothing. <laughs> and they have no idea, like, they'll sit there like... Usually, if you look very closely, they'll have their mouth kind of open like this. They have this look as if he's not even, the TV's not even on, he's just staring at it like... And his wife will come up to him and say, what are you thinking about? He's like this, nothing. 
And she's like, no, you must be thinking about something. Even sisters, when your wife, uh, when your husband's driving, you're asking, what are you thinking about? He's like, huh? I was thinking about nothing. And she was like, it, that doesn't work. He's like, why? Because if I try to sit down and think about nothing, I'm thinking about thinking about nothing, so it doesn't really count. So I can't believe it. There's something that's bothering you. And really, just to confirm if I, Baba Ali's making this up or not, brothers, this is the one chance your, sis, your wife is listening, and this will save you a lot of headache in the future. Do you have the ability of thinking about nothing? Yes. There you go. Confirmation majority said yes. So that's a skill that no matter how much sisters you try, you can't do that. But brothers, there is one thing that every sister here can do that I can't teach any brother. In fact, if brothers try to train themselves, they still can't do it. Sisters is pre-wired in them. They can do it without even rehearsing. They can do it without thinking. It's pre-wired in every sister here. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made us differently. Sisters can make a very special sound. A sound that brothers can't make. And what, she's like, what is it? What is that sound? Before I, before I spoil the surprise and tell you what that sound is, you're probably wondering, Ali, after all this talking, how did you meet your wife? Many years ago, I met her in London. She was sitting down on a park bench. I met her, and as soon as I spoke to her for about 20 minutes, I took out my camera. And she's like, what is that for? And she was really shy. I said, just in case this actually works out, I want to record it, so if we have children one day, they're going to ask how you met Mama. Did you, you hear that sound? In fact, I made that into a two-hour movie and gave it to her five years later as a gift and how I met my most amazing wife in the world. Did you notice what just happened right now? The sisters were like, ah. The brothers, mashallah, mashallah, mashallah. <laughs> Not one brother did ah. The sisters, you notice how they did the ah? The ah, it was like, ah. And what was more interesting about that is not one sister told the other sisters, okay, one, two, three, let's start. And when we're going to finish, there was not one sister that went very high pitch and there was no, oh! There was not a low pitch, oh! They knew when to start. There was no auntie that got up on stage and said, okay, everyone, at the count of three, let's do it together. One, two, three. They know when. They have the skill, as she says. Now, brothers, it's a big room. It's hard to hear. But I want them to demonstrate it one more time. Sisters, can you do it one more time for us, please? You see it? You see how they do it? Now, sisters, it's pre-wired in you. It's amazing. This is what makes you so amazing. But sisters, this cannot be taught to brothers. It can't. I'll give you an example. Brothers, only brothers, no sisters. Don't, don't, let, don't give, make it easy for them. Let them try. Brothers, try to do all. What just happened there? One guy started too early, ah! One guy went too high, ah! One was too low, ah! One guy just like doing this. He wasn't even thinking either, what? what's going on? What's going on? Did I miss it? He just all like one second late. It was not even synchronized. Now, we, we just criticized them. Let's try it one more time. Guys, we'll try it again? Oh, there you go, forget. It sounds like a wounded cow. It's, it sounds like an animal that's in pain. And this is how different we are from one another. So, yeah, you have the skill. Sisters, okay, brothers, since you're not reacting very well and sisters react, I'm going to tell somebody else that sisters can do that brothers can't do. Sisters have the ability of either speaking, I mean, sorry, they can speak and listen at the same time. They can. Brothers, they can't do that. They ha that's true, it's true, you know. Brothers, they can either speak or they can listen. You try and make them do both at the same time, they go chaotic. It's crazy for them. I'll give you guys an example. Let's say we're having dinner. Let's say where guys are, all the people are getting together, they're going to have dinner, and there's eight sisters at one table and eight brothers at another table. And we're going to have the same situation. They're all eating dinner. Brothers are talking and sisters are talking. But the talking is very different. When eight brothers get in a circle and they start talking, one brother talks and we all look at him. Then the next brother talks, we all look at him. Then the next brother talks, we all look at him. If accidentally two brothers talk at the same time, we all get confused and uncle will get up either you talk or you talk, I can't hear both of you. We're confused. I can't hear anything. Now sisters is very different. 
she said, we're all talking at the same time. You know what happens? This is exactly, you're very true. Sisters, eight sisters will get together. They're at eight sisters, but every sister is facing another sister. And they're talking to her, and she's saying, uh-huh, uh-huh. And as they're talking to the other sister, one person's talking, the other one's nodding. They're listening, but this sister is talking to the other sister, and there's every sister by two, by two, by two, by two formations. Four conversations happening in one table while every sister is talking to another sister. They're listening to all the other conversations. Am I right, sisters? The sisters have the ability, without effort, listen to most numerous conversations at the same time. Uh huh. Really? What happened? Oh, when did you guys go camping? If you take a brother from the brother's side and you send him over, go find out what the sisters are talking about. He goes over, he sits down, he gets completely confused, he's lost, he goes back to the brothers. What are they talking about? I have no idea. <laughs> he's completely lost. And this is how different we are from one another. Again, men and women are so different. So, I'm going to tell you that <laughs> something, brothers, that you have to be very careful of your wife. Sisters, you guys know exactly our weak spot. If a brother misbehaves, mistreats you, does something or says something that hurts your feelings, you don't do the same thing back. Sisters will say a few words that will scare every man to death. They leave you with two small children and say, I'll be back in five minutes. Men are completely lost. Because you ask, where is the kid? I don't know. It was just here a minute ago. I was like, uh, kids, they don't know. They, men are completely lost when they're watching small children to the point that women know this, so they want to make sure he knows to appreciate his wife. So before he leaves, before she leaves, she tells her husband, there is pizza cooking in the oven for the kids. I'm cooking pasta for myself and you. I have the, fr the front door is open. Don't make sure it's locked. There's a TV show coming out. Make sure you record it for me. My friend might call. Uh, baby needs to be changed. I'll be right back. So I'm like, I'm goodbye. And your, uh, your husband's like, no, no, no. Take the kids. Take the kids. And he's, she's gone. You sit there. The phone rings. The pasta doesn't get cooked. The pizza gets burned. The baby's poop was everywhere. The front door is <laughs> open. I can't find my daughter. I don't know what's going on. The TV show never gets recorded. She comes home. What happened? What happened? The phone rang. <laughs> and then you see your wife. Your wife, when she has like a headset on, it looks like a headset because she has her hijab with the phone plugged in right this way. She's talking on the phone, we're talking to her friend. While she's talking to her friend, she's stirring the pasta. This is something that men can't do, two things at the same time. As she's doing this, she cooks a piece of oven door with her foot. She's watching the kids with one eye, she's watching the TV show with the other eye, and she does this all without effort. Am I right, sisters? Yes. Appreciate your wife. All right. Last but not least, before I get off the of stage. Oh. Okay, you guys want me to show you guys a story? I'll show you guys a story that actually happened to a sister in Ottawa. You're probably wondering, Ali, how do you learn all this stuff? Like, what made you want to learn about men and women? Many, many years ago, before I was, I've been married for 15 years, but before I was married to my wife now, I was married to a different sister, and that sister was actually from Ottawa, Canada. I met her at uh, Canada, I'm sorry, I met her at ISNA. She was from Canada. And I met her at an Islamic conference. You know what, I'll tell you the story of how I met her. Because my life, I can't make this stuff up. I went to an Islamic conference, I was selling some type of uh, merchandise. My friends at the conference, uh, they told me, Ali, I'm going to the conference. And I said, why are you going? I'm going there to find a husband or wife. I'm like, really, at an Islamic conference? Yeah. And I quickly realized what ISNA stands for. Not Islamic Society of North America, but I'm single and available. Okay, so, <laughs> and I go to this event, and I'm not even thinking that way because I'm a new convert to Islam. I'm still like learning about Islam. I'm trying to sell merchandise. I'm not thinking about marriage. And what happened was these brothers, they strike out and things don't work out for them. But for me, there was this girl that kept coming back to my booth each time, and she was trying to buy one of my products that cost $5. And she came back to my table and said, how much is this? I said, it's $5. She said, oh, I have this Canadian money. I'm from Ottawa. I don't have American money. Can you hold on to, um, I'm going to get money exchanged. Can you hold one of them for me? I said, sure. So I put it under the table. She came back later that day. She says, I'm sorry. Um, I will be back. Just keep holding it for me. I want one of those for sure. I said, sure. Then she came back the next time. So Ali, I still can't find any place here at Islam exchanges money. Are you still holding it for me? Yes, I am. And I have conversations with her, and she comes back and comes back and comes back. At the very day, last year of the conference, she comes and says, Ali, that one tape you have for me, I never got a chance 
to uh, get exchanged, and there's no place to exchange his money, just give it to somebody else. Sell it to somebody else. I said, sister, you've been here like five or six times. Just, it's only $5. Just take it. She said, are you sure? I said, I'm sure. She took it, and she walked away. As she's walking away, my friend's been watching the whole thing. This is what he does. <laughs> I'm like, what? He said, Ali, I saw you talk to all these sisters and all these brothers. You, this one girl, you spoke to her much more. You gave her the item for free. You had more eye contact. You had conversation. Da, 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 da. You're interested in that sister. I said, what are you talking about? He said, Ali, listen to me. I came here. I'm single and available. It didn't work out for me. Our other friend, I'm single and available. It didn't work out for you. You weren't even trying. It worked out for you. Your future wife could be walking away. Go ask her. I mean, ask her what? Go ask her. You're interested in her. If you don't, this is what he said to me, if you don't approach her for marriage, you're always going to ask yourself, what if? And I was like, you're right. But I said, I'm a brand new Muslim. I don't know how to convert, uh, uh, speak to sisters. How do, I, how do I approach for marriage? I don't want to be something uh, offensive or haram. He said, Ali, she's walking away. I said, what do I do? He said, uh, I said, give me a piece of paper. And he's like, what? I said, give me a piece of paper. I grabbed a piece of paper and a pen. And I start writing. And he's like, dude, what are you writing? She's walking away. I said, I need to write something. And I wrote down, and I wrote something. And I'm running around looking for the sister. And I remember Isna has like 30,000 people, for those who've been to the conference. And I remember, I remember she was wearing white hijab. And I quickly realized there's a lot of sisters wearing white hijab. So I keep walking in front of sisters. Oh, that's not you. Oh, you, you that's not you. So I look really weird. And at one point, I give up. I can't find her. There's too many people. There's swarms of people. And I give up. And as I'm walking back, I see her. So I walk up to her. I'm like, Assalamu alaikum, sister. And she's like, Wa alaikum salam. And she walks right past me. She walks right past me. And I just stand there like, uh. I think she was, I was trying to say, Assalamu alaikum, hello, not Assalamu alaikum, goodbye. So this is really awkward. So I turn around, I run back in front of her. I'm like, Assalamu alaikum, hello, not Assalamu alaikum, goodbye. Um, um, I need to ask you a question. Um, and this is really awkward for me. And I apologize if I'm doing things wrong but are you single? And she was white Canadian convert and her face blushed red and she put her head down. She said, yes. I said, Do you think this is embarrassing for you? You have no idea what I'm going through right now. So I wrote my information on a piece of paper. If you're interested in me, contact me. If you're not interested in me, throw the piece of paper away. But my only request is don't throw the paper away until I walk away. Otherwise, I'll hurt my self-confidence. I saw like I'm goodbye. I run away, like I, I, I don't even look back, I just give her the paper and run away. I go left turns and right turns and left turns and right turns and go all the way back to the booth where all the brothers are. Now that one brother that did this, <laughs> he went and told all the brothers what I went to go do. All my friends that are there, seven or eight brothers, are sitting at the booth and who is the sister? Who did you marry? What's this piece of paper? What did you write? And I'm sitting there explaining the story to them, the same way I'm explaining to you. And they're doing what you're doing, they're smiling. And one of the guys, his name was Amr. He went like this. <gasps> While I'm talking, he goes, <gasps> and sisters, the male brain doesn't look like the female brain. As I said, you're smarter than we are. So you get information, realize something's wrong faster than we do. But I don't stop talking. I continue talking. And the other brothers are like, <gasps> <gasps> and all these brothers are like completely paused. They look like statues. They're, like, they're not laughing anymore. They're not smiling. I keep talking. And then I realize something's wrong. I go to Amr in front of me. I'm like, is she behind me? He's like this. <laughs> Apparently, she followed me back, um, <laughs> and I didn't know she was behind me, and I'm explaining the story, and then I realized what this looks like, because it looks like I just did a prank. It looks like I just did this without the right intentions, like I, was, I did this as a gag or just, just as a joke, and now I'm telling all my friends what I just went and did, and this looks wrong. And I'm, I'm like, but then I'm thinking to myself, how much of this has she heard? I don't know what she's heard or not. So let me, re, re, let me turn around and say, Assalamu alaikum, and see how she responds. And that's what I did. I said, Assalamu alaikum, sister. And she's like, Wa alaikum salam. And it was just like this. Just like this, dead silence. Awkward, awkward silence. Seven guys watching this. He's there, my friend eating popcorn, watching. What's going to happen? What's going to happen? So uh, <laughs> she says, Here's my contact number of my dad. You should talk to him first before we communicate. I said, Aww. And I'm like, okay, that sounds like a great idea. Is that it? She's like, yeah, that's it. What else did you think? Oh, nothing. I was just wondering. <laughs> so <laughs> I spoke to the sister. She was an amazing sister. But the problem was that we just didn't match. And this is the problem we're having with the Muslim youth today. 
many of us, sisters and brothers, we marry for superficial reasons. Men, they marry sisters for superficial reasons. For what? We all know this because of beauty. Beauty, if a girl is beautiful enough, the guy will give her check marks and give her passes on things that he would not give other sisters passes for. And unfortunately, sisters, to be fair, you can be superficial as well. How? Some sisters can be superficial by if a guy is successful or has enough money or has a certain fame or degree, we give him passes on things that we would not normally give passes for other brothers. So how do you separate this superficial stuff? So I said, okay, I have to learn the, when the Prophet Sallallahu said, marry them for the deen. How do I know I'm marrying someone? Like, how do I know the person I'm speaking to is really genuinely them? So the, the, the sister, when I told her I met her on the park bench, my wife right now, before I met her, I spoke to a bunch of sisters, and many sisters showed interest, and I had no idea who was telling me the truth and who was not. So I came up with a series of questions, and I sent it to all 17 sisters I spoke to. 16 of them answered it one way, only one of them answered it the way I wanted. And what I mean by the correct, uh, what type of questions were these? The questions were questions that didn't have right or wrong answers. There were questions like, do you think, are you more fair or more forgiving? Are you more like this or more like this? Are you more like, I know what the right answer is. I know what I want in a wife. They don't know what my right answer is. And I sent these questions to these sisters. And one sister was the one who answered it correctly. I said, I'll meet you in London. That's where she lived. I met her on the park bench. After 20 minutes of meeting her, I knew that she was the wife to be. I married her nine days later. And then I, we, 15, years, 15 years later, I still feel like a newlywed. My friends have asked me, what are those questions? Can I borrow those? They borrowed those questions. They got married. So one friend after another friend, 832 success stories later, that's what half our deen's about. We're helping Muslims get married, inshallah. A lot of people are shy to ask for this because they don't want to be on a public website. This is a private website. So what I've done is I put some of these. I have somebody. To, I didn't do it. I asked a sister to put some of these in the sister's bathroom and some for the brother's bathroom. Why? Because people don't pick up half our Dean cards in front of everybody else. They go discreetly and pick one up. Oh, yeah, this is for a friend. Anyways, back to my last thing before I leave. Um, I want to share you guys one short story. One short story. My wife. Mo my wife right now, I want to give a brothers a piece of advice. This is you guys can listen, but brothers need to hear this piece of advice. Sometimes, as the Muslim comedian, I don't know when to turn off the switch. I don't know when to be Baba Ali and when to be Ali the husband. And this is the problem sometimes we brothers who, who are, have the sense of humor, we don't know when to stop joking around. My wife is not like me at all. She doesn't have 5,000 friends on Facebook. She's more like five friends on Facebook. That's her personality. She's very shy. She's very reserved. She's very quiet. Um, she doesn't publicly speak anywhere, anywhere. And, um, and she doesn't even show her feelings. When I first married her, she doesn't, like, she doesn't open. She's like a turtle. It, it takes her a long time to open up and show her feelings. So I got a text message from my wife, and she sent me a message saying, um, and this is very rare because this came out of the blue. I don't know what, where this came from. She was saying, Assalamu alaikum Ali, I just want to let you know that I don't, sh I don't share my feelings often, but I want to let you know I appreciate, me and the kids appreciate you for everything you do. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you the highest of Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answer your du'as. May Allah, and she was saying this beautiful, beautiful, Dua and amazing words to me. It was very, very touching. Right there, I had to switch off Baba Ali, the comedian, and I had to be Baba Ali, the husband, and I responded immediately with three words. Sister, you know what those three words were? It was not, I love you. It was, who is this? My wife didn't respond. At that point, you're just waiting for the dot, dot, dot to show up. There's no dot, dot, dot. And I'm sitting there waiting for her response. There's no response. There's no typing, nothing. And I realize, oh, I might be in trouble. So I say, I respond with, you're the love of my life. She still doesn't respond. <laughs> and I figure, if I'm in trouble, I'm in trouble. So one more comedy bit I put was, but seriously, who is this? So my point of all this stuff is that my wife, when I got home, she's not angry, she's laughing because she knows me. I don't try to, even as much as I'm trying to be funny with her, there's a line I can't cross. For many of you, this was across the line, but for her, this is normal day living with Baba Ali. Um, be good to your husbands, be good to your wife. If there's one piece of advice before I get off the stage, and this will hopefully make your marriages very, very successful, let's, 
treat your husband, make your husband feel like a man, and make your wife feel like a woman. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs>